If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast presented, of course, by DraftKings Sportsbook, and it is draft week 2022. Hopefully you're all watching or listening. I guess I'm preaching to the choir because you're already here. Tell everybody you know the NFL Draft is the single best event we are aware of for betting purposes. We are about to throw out free money for all of you over the course of the next 30 minutes. And by we, I mean me, at Ross Tucker NFL. I mean him, Steve Fezzik, the only two-time winner of the Super Bowl professional betting at Fezzik Sports. And I mean him. My brother from another mother, at Evan Silva, from Establish the Run. We had Anthony Amico last week. He was excellent. Now we have one of the GOATs, the great Evan Silva, my longtime co-host for years of the Fantasy Feast podcast, which you should absolutely all check out. Listen, Evan, Steve talked about this last week, so I want to get you in on it first. I still think there's a lot of people out there that don't really bet the NFL draft mm. and don't realize how good of an opportunity this is. Yep. I think it's the most profitable, at least football related event to bet on that you could get year round. Sometimes the Super Bowl can be pretty profitable. Um, this past Super Bowl was very profitable. It was a somewhat predictable game and um, just the kind of, kind of the way that it went, but man, NFL draft props are the way to go. It's really like how I get all the money back that I lose uh, when I'm betting all the other stuff. You know what I mean? Like I need this time of year to keep my head above water. (laughs) Thoughts, Steve? Absolutely right. Well, think about this. In the NFL, let's say you could lay two on a game that should be five and it closes five. You're like, I got phenomenal closing line value you're still only going to win 62% of the time on a bet like that because it's still, there's a whole lot of variance. There's no variance on some of these, bets. you just win, you know? And and so, you know, Anthony really crushed it last week. There is no way Evan can do as well as Anthony. And here's why. In many ways, it's like a scavenger hunt. And Evan is joining the scavenger hunt a week later than Anthony is. So Anthony has already just gotten his, um, Car- Carliftus over 18 and a half. He's gotten his sauce gardener under, you know, uh, you know, right. six and a half, They're just incredible bets that are no longer there. Now, new opportunities keep presenting themselves with new information, but become scarcer and scarcer. Well, a couple of things. So like to your point, right? Sauce gardener, Anthony said, love him under seven and a half. It's five and a half now Yeah, where I'm looking. And by the way, it's a whole other topic for another day, but you can't bet on the NFL draft in Pennsylvania, which drives me absolutely nuts. You can't bet on the NFL draft in Pennsylvania. I would love, look, I think I said this last week, Evan, you know, I live in the state capital, so I know like lobbyists. I know guys that are in politics. I'm texting them. They're all worried about who the next governor is going to be. I'm like, Mm. nobody cares who the next governor (laughs) is, okay? We want to be able to bet on the NFL draft in Pennsylvania. Can you guys focus on something that's actually important and that people care about? You're losing money. People would want to bet. And as Steve mentioned last week, let the books decide what the odds are and whether or not they want to operate. That's not something that should be legislated. Let me give you one piece of advice before we get to Evans. Tom Pelissero, who I think does an excellent job. Yes. He came out earlier today. All right. This is like an hour and a half ago. Um, 12.04 p.m. What? How is that possible? 12.04 p.m. It's not even 12.04 p.m. right now. I don't know how that happened. So anyway, and he had his list of seven potential surprise first rounders. Let me just tell you, when he puts that list out, they're not really surprises. It means there's a pretty good chance that they're going late in the first round 
and people just don't realize it. Like I'm looking at some of the guys he has, like Lewis seen the safety from Georgia, yep. Logan Hall, the D lineman from Houston, who I love. How about this right now? Lewis seems over, let me find it. Lewis seems over under 34 and a half right now. Logan Hall's over under is 39 and a half. There is no chance he's lasting till 40. Zero percent chance. We are, I am giving you money. Pelissero talks to all these teams. He knows he doesn't write this article unless he knows these guys are going late in the first round or they got a great chance to. And they're over under, Steve. They're terrible. They're, they're like 39 and a half for Logan Hall. I'm predicting right now he goes in the first round, let alone 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. You got to schedule all your podcasts on the same day next year because this way you can get out of that crummy, crumb bum state of Pennsylvania and get yourself to Jersey so you can make some money, Ross. <laughs> it's a great point. It's a great point. But Evan, you know, Pelissero knows what he's talking about. Oh, I've been if following he him has for those guys. There's a, there's a, I would say, good chance they're going because he always said, "Oh, surprise!" It's not a surprise to him. They told him that. No, I mean I've been following Pelissero for. 12 years at this point you know he used to cover the vikings he did an incredible job covering the vikings extremely plugged in that's how you become the national uh you know the the national reporter that he is now by just absolutely crushing the vikings beat logan hall i think he's going 31 to the Bengals. so i'm with you there uh the Bengals are a team that historically will telegraph their first round pick they don't really care they let you know some information get out I, I liked, and then Lewis Seen, is it Seen or, or Cine or what? Seen, it's Seen. Lewis Seen, okay, out of Georgia. We just put in a bet, and, and we, like, um, uh, release props. Lewis Seen, to be the second safety drafted behind Kyle Hamilton, is plus 300 on DraftKings right now. Um, and I, I, I just bet it just before the show. So, you know, if you want to lose, you know, at, at least you know that I'll be losing with you. But I really like this one, three to one. Lewis seemed to be the second safety taken, and he probably goes in the first round. One of the better bets, and I think it's got to just too much ne uh, negative odds at this point. But one of the better bets throughout the pre-draft phase has been over one and a half safeties to go in the first round. So that's nuts because you look at like what Palacero wrote, or you look at who the other safeties that could go second. I guess my question is, do they, I guess they list Dax Hill as a safety. Cause I think yeah. that's the, only, he's going before yeah. Petre from Baylor. He's going before Jaquan Brisker. It's really just seen or Dax Hill. Yeah. Um, I think I'd still probably go with the over under and go under 34 and a half than necessarily, but plus 300. It's probably tell me this, Steve, if it's a flip of the coin between two guys, what should the odds be to be the second safety off the board? Well, it should be minus 100, obviously. Right. Okay. Yep. So then if he's plus 300 to be the second safety, that's what, what's the math on the value there? Well, We're you getting a lot of value. If, if you bet, if you bet a dollar twice, Ross, you're going to get back $4. So you've got a 100% ROI that's pretty darn good. That's equivalent to betting the sun will come up tomorrow and pick them. By the way, Evan, there's nobody in the world that does the math in their head for this stuff like Steve. It's yeah. uh, You can ask him anything. Like, I might do a show one time mm -hmm. where all I do is just ask him, like, random. Like, you're like Rain Man, Steve. How do you have all of this? That was an easy one. But how do you have all this in your – he says it, like, no calculator ever, Evan. He just said, like, he does it in his head. Well, I was an actuary, which is uh, the, the rough equivalent of being a PhD in math. The PhDs in math mm. will say, no, it isn't. It's not as good. Well, it took me eight years to, like, take all these exams that everyone else failed to become a fellow in the Society of Actuaries. So I'd argue it's right about the same. Um, so the bottom line is I'm so out of practice and so rusty. But certainly being a professional gambler, there are guys that – they literally can't name a player. Evan, you'd be shocked by this. They cannot name a player, and they're just looking at mathematical strong plays and betting them and winning. 
No, I've, I've hung out with Bill Krakenberger before. He knows nothing about sports, you know? I mean, and, and he will admit that to you. Like, he's like, I don't know anything about this. You know, I'm just playing the numbers. And in many ways, I question how much Billy Walters really knows yeah. right now the most famous sports better in the world because he's relying. He's a mutual fund manager. He's got seven guys who are giving him information and he's just massaging and he's handicapping his handicappers, if you will, in terms of what he's going to bet on. It's unreal. All right, Evan, let's get to some of the props you were telling me before the show mm-hmm. that you really like. This is an interesting one. Yeah. There's a lot of buzz on Jermaine Johnson, the Florida State DN, to go to the Jets at mm-hmm. number four. But you like him as a long shot, 100 to 1 for the Lions to take him number two overall. Mm -hmm. At this point, people think it's going to be Trayvon Walker number one. I would think that the – I would think Aiden Hutchinson would be perfect for the Lions, Dan Campbell, Michigan, the whole deal. But you like Jermaine Johnson's chances at 100 to one. Well, I think – well, first of all, in in my final mock draft, I'm going to have Trayvon Walker going number one to the Jaguars and Aiden Aiden Hutchinson going number two to the Lions. So I don't actually think – that this is going to happen. Okay. But I think when you're doing this stuff and you're looking, you're trying to hit bombs, you know, trying to hit a a real long shot, like a hundred to one, you got to kind of embrace the variance, understand that although you have some level of confidence in what's going to happen, this is one of the most uh, toughest to predict sporting events that there is year round. I mean, I used to compare it to like March Madness in terms of the volatility and the unpredictability. I think it's even harder to predict to predict than March Madness. You know, you can go and look at historical mock mock draft accuracy, and a really good year would match um, in in a mock draft would match ten players to the teams that actually take them. You know, ten, what's ten divided by thirty two? It's like we're we're talking about like thirty three percent. You know, that would be an awesome hit rate and they would it would give you one of the best mock drafts nationally um so you just have to embrace- say, let, me, let me jump yeah. in real quick on that Evan. Ahead. sure steve isn't that because it's like a butterfly effect and one team doing something you don't yeah. expect like changes the whole thing like that's why it's so hard sure but i'm gonna disagree actually with the great evan silva here i'm gonna make the case that the draft is the most predictable event of all the events and here's why as far as the accuracy of the march madness people are like i got 60 i got every team but one right well that's because you're just predicting are they going to make the tournament or not they're not predicting what exactly think about if you had to predict not just are they going to be a seven seed but are they going to be the third seven seed or the first seven seed that's really what you're doing with the draft you have to predict the exact slot of course you're only going to get 10 of those right but the bottom line is there's no unpredictability. There, it, 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 the reason the books get bombed on this year after year, and Vegas doesn't want action. Vegas is uh, – Circuit didn't put yeah. up lines until Monday, $1,000 max. Westgate just put up their limits um, on, on Monday. Their max bet, I believe, is 1000 on the app is 250 The books get crushed because guess what? Alave is going to go in the top 18, and Gardner is going to go in the top seven. And Karlaftis is not going to go in the top 18. All these bets are massively predictable, not unpredictable. Now, will Karlaftis go 29th or 23rd? I don't know. That's true. That's volatile. But Mm -hmm. if you're talking about predictability early, nothing is more predictable than the NFL draft. Um, I I understand that that position. Um, If you're talking about draft slot and maybe the range that players are going to go, we have a, a, a somewhat good feel for that. But in terms of just specifically matching the players to the teams, it's really difficult and it becomes more difficult as the draft progresses because there's going to be some some surprise. And I mean, the teams, the teams have no idea how this is going to go. You know, the actual teams that, you know, they're they're all playing games, you know, against each other and. No one really knows. Sure, but you, know. you, you, you may as well be asked to predict the exact score of a baseball game. Of course, that's impossible. The same thing. I don't know who's going to go 34th in the draft. So from that, I agree with you from that perspective. Yeah. I mean, there's that's just that's how I think of it. Because that's how I think of it because I'm like, you know, all about my mock draft. You know what <laughs> I mean? So that, that's I, and I love that you are. Yeah. Um, 
By the way, I think I'm going to have my guy that you introduced me to, Ben Standing, tomorrow on the Fantasy Feast, who's been one of the best mock yeah, drafters. he's really, really so anyway, good. I interrupted you, Evan, yeah. rudely. But right. what you were basically saying is, we're trying to hit a Jermaine bomb Johnson here, man. going to go number two overall, but he might. I, I think that it should be like 30 to one and not 100 to one. You know what I mean? Jermaine Johnson, a really good pass rusher. Um had 11 and a half sacks in 12 games last year. Uh, Detroit needs help up front. And I think that he sort of fits the um, the, the culture in Detroit. He, he will defend the run as well. Um, and I think he, he'd just be a safe pick for Detroit. Again, I don't think that they're going to take him. I think they're going to take Aiden Hutchinson. But I do think that there's a possibility that we could be throwing a curveball. And I, I, I want to be holding at least a sprinkle at 100 to 1 in case that curveball comes. You know what else is a safe bet? Athletic greens. Delicious. 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Look, Fezzik doesn't like to eat vegetables. Evan doesn't like to eat vegetables. I don't like to eat vegetables. Drink your vegetables in the morning. Get it over with. Cost less than $3 a day. There's a reason why people like Tim Ferriss are all over it, 7,000 five-star reviews. And to make it easy, Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash money. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash money to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance i just ordered more i ran out of the first stash i had so i ordered more what else am i ordering on the evan silva prop menu i need, I need to say I, I need to say one more thing about the jermaine johnson thing that i, I forgot oh, to okay. say um number i've been drinking two athletic greens a day keeps you regular i mean it, and it gives you energy i mean i i, I love that stuff but nice. uh jermaine johnson the other day it was two days ago dave burkett detroit free press He's been covering the Lions for a really long time. Um, and, I mean, he's as, as plugged in as anyone when it comes to this team. He tweeted that he wouldn't be surprised if the Lions took Jermaine Johnson at number two. Now, I think that this would occur only in a scenario where Aiden Hutchinson went number one. And then Trayvon Walker fell to number three, which, again, I think is low probability. But it should be, again, more, more like 30 to one than 100 to one. Okay, what about... You got Kenneth Walker. You yeah. like him as number one running back drafted? Again, it just comes down to the price. You know, the the consensus opinion is that Brees Hall is going to be the first running back taken. But on DraftKings, I just I, I don't think he should be minus two fifty to be the first running back taken, and Kenneth Walker at plus two twenty five. So this is another situation where we're kind of embracing the variance, um, you know, understanding what we don't know. And I think both these guys probably go like in the, in the thirties or maybe the forties and Kenneth Walker, if you look at like uh, advanced metrics, he was a better tackle breaker, which has been a predictive characteristic. Uh, he was a better tra tackle breaker in college than was Brees Hall. Now Brees Hall has the receiving acumen that Kenneth Walker did not show. And that's a significant advantage of him. But I, I just think that th these are mispriced here. And so I'm willing to take a shot. Kenneth Walker, first running back to be drafted, plus 225. And then Kyler Gordon as a, as a first-round pick. Yeah, these Washington corners have a really nice background. Um, I mean, this is becoming like corner U out west. Buda Baker, Marcus Peters, Byron Murphy, Desmond Trufant, Sidney Jones has, become, has come on as a player, Taylor Rapp, Elijah Molden. Trent McDuffie is going to be a first round pick. I think that teams feel a level of comfort um, because of the school. I mean, you, you read like, you know, scouting reports and stuff like they will talk about, Hey, you know, Georgia wide receivers have struggled or Alabama defensive linemen get hurt or something like they kind of buy into those, that narrative type stuff. And Kyler Gordon um, has been a, like a fringe First round pick, if you look at like Daniel Jeremiah's mock drafts and Peter Schrager and guys that, you know, are national reporters. And then if you look at the back end of the first round, a lot of a lot of corner needy teams. 
He plays a premium position. I think he's going to start right away wherever he goes. And so I'm willing to take him plus 110 to be a first-round pick, Kyler Gordon. Um, your next one I really like. I, I think it's sneaky. Yeah. But I, I am I love surprised this one. that these are the odds for him. Yep. Is it 10-1 to 1 on DraftKings right now, Quay Walker, first linebacker drafted? Yes, sir. Too bad, too bad you live where you do, Ross. Sorry, man. Because, but... listen, I've talked to some people. I'd be surprised if he doesn't get drafted ahead of N'Kobe Dean. Mm -hmm. And then as it relates to Devin Lloyd, it almost feels like it's a, it's a coin flip. I agree. I, I totally agree. And so what, what's the value we're getting here, Fezzik? I mean, 10 to 1, Quay Walker to be the first linebacker drafted. We agree that he's going to go ahead of his teammate, N'Kobe Dean. And we think it's like a toss-up between Devin Lloyd and um, uh, uh, Quay Walker. Walker to be the first linebacker drafted. What What is Quay Walker's over-under right now? Do we have that, Evan? That's a good question. Um, I think it's I think really it was high. Like oh, my gosh. 34? 33 and a half. You know that I, is not right. I don't want. I don't want to gamble. I just want to win. So I just want to play him <laughs> under the thirty-three and a half and just cash my ticket and not. I, I don't want to split my tens when the dealer is a five and the true count is good and the book says I'm supposed to split because it's a pinochle deck, unless it's like I'm certain it's a pinochle deck. Uh, I just want to stand on my twenty and and win. Why, why can't we bet both? Why Why can't we take our even money winnings? And then, you know, essentially, because we're, we're confident in that, and then use them to throw it on the 10 to 1. I, you know, I, I, mean, I like that. Let's so get bet, some bobs. Bet, Steve, bet we need to units, get some bombs here, man. Bet two units on the under and bet another unit on the 10 to 1, sure. All yes. right, let's go. Steve, that, that we've been doing the show a long time. We started this show the year after Evan and I started Fantasy Feast. That is might have been my favorite line you've ever said. I don't want to gamble. I just want <laughs> uh, by the way, when I play blackjack and I will split tens on a super high count and the table loses their minds thinking I'm the dumbest blackjack player in the history of the planet. Yeah, when the irony that, is right? that every, every single person I play with is horrendous. No one has any clue. People base it, say, I know they, they think they've got the game mastered and they're standing on the twelves against the threes. They got no clue what they're doing. Why? Okay. Explain that to me real quick. Why are they so mad when you split the tens? I don't. You're I don't supposed play to just take guys. the win, right? You're supposed to just yeah, take the because, twenty. Because they're like minor birds. They just have been taught. Oh, you you never wreck a you never wreck a great hand like like twenty. Why would you split that up? When the, the irony is, there's plenty of hands that are good, like a seven against the dealer five that you break up all the time and double down. And yet they they never question that. They the people just don't think they they're just repeating what they've been heard. God, okay. There's like the like the the ten blackjack commandments, and everybody gets mad at the uh, at the table if you break any of them. Um, okay, this this next one, these next two are really interesting, Evan. You have a bet in on the exact position of the Packers' first pick, yep. um, but it's not what people think. Yeah. Um, well, so yeah, so DraftKings offers this. I think like FanDuel offers it too. A bunch of books offer this. You can bet on the position at which the team will use its first pick. And so I just go through and I look at like, you know, I, I compare my team needs with the odds. I'm not taking anything that's like close to even money here. I'm trying to hit, you know, a bomb. So nine to one Packers to take an offensive lineman with their first pick. Their first pick is at number 22. David Bakhtiari is coming off like a lost season due to knee problems. He only played one game last year, and then he like aggravated the injury, couldn't come back. Lucas Patrick went to the Bears. Billy Turner uh, left for the Broncos. Dennis Kelly's still a free agent. They need some help on the offensive line. Um, and so I think at these odds, like it should be more like four to one but we can get it at nine to one. And so that's why I was willing to take a shot here. It's interesting. I feel like 
Packers fans will lose their minds if they don't take a wide receiver I know. in the first round. But you might be on to something here because Bakhtiari having to get a cleanup surgery, that is not good. You have a torn ACL. You try to come back. You can't come back. You have to have a cleanup surgery. That's a bad path to be on. That's not good. And I'll tell you what these teams do sometimes. They keep that quiet so that people don't know they're going to take a lineman. You know, for all we know, back theory might never play. And I don't think it's going to happen. I will say this. Nijman, Yash Nijman did a pretty good job last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, although this is last year, his contract actually already. But they've got Runyon and Myers and Royce Newman. Jenkins. And Elton Jenkins. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd say four to one. But I think yeah. – um, I, I think it might be a little rich. I think it's likelier that they would take alignment at 28, probably take the receiver at 22, come back at 28. Although, you know, I think these wide receivers are going to go fast, man. I mean, I think that the top five receivers are all going to be gone by 17, the chargers at the latest. So, I mean, they, they could like, you know, the receivers could go, and then they're like, well, we, we need to take alignment. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you got to embrace the variance that you just really don't know right, really what's going to happen. And one pick can lead to a domino effect or a butterfly effect or whatever and change, you know, change the map, change the course of the draft. You love the draft. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. You lo- I can just tell you love mock draft. You love <laughs> the intrigue. I'm, I'm a nerd, man. All right, what will you do? It's noon Eastern on Tuesday. Tell me about the next 30 hours for you. Like, are most of your bets already made? Or are you just like, you see a Pelissero article, you pop it, and boom, you're hitting the under on the guys he says are going first round. I'm just, I'm trying to hit long shots at this point. I I got all my even money bets in, and I'm just looking for for bombs. And hopefully we we can land one here on this show, help the people. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm writing a, uh, an article. Uh, it'll be 10 things, I think, about the 2022 20, draft. And then uh, I'll try to get some sleep and then uh, start banging on that final mock draft and, um, you know, getting ready for the real thing. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Evan Silva. Check out Establish the Run. Steve, any further advice is your last word of wisdom to our great listeners or viewers at youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL before they bet on the draft and watch the draft Thursday night. Listen to these established the run guys who are, by the way, Evan, your guys are killing the market. Please don't release stuff that's only at one book. I mean, I've gotten so much feedback from the the crack mans of the world. Like these guys are too good. They're ruining the market, by the way. Here's Quay Walker under 37 and a half, under 37 and a half. Thank you. That's um, a good just, number. Yep. I just bet it three times in a row. Um, <laughs> while we Dude, were- Steve, I've never seen you do this before. This is why people need to check us out on YouTube. The last couple shows, last week with Anthony and today, Steve just little last week with Anthony, he was writing them down. Today, he just pulled his phone out and just placed the bet while the show's and, going and on. And far be it for me to, to to give advice to the great establishment of Establish the Run. But, you know, they're doing a lot of stuff with the USFL, and I'm catching all your stuff. It's excellent. But there's such a, a smidgen of a market to bet these players. And I know there's daily fantasy, but you got if you can, my request would be have your guys talk a little bit more about the spread and the total and recommendations on bets there. Because well, we can start getting stuff wrong, you mean? So that we can start. <laughs> so you can start getting stuff wrong. Well, you can start, you know, giving me stuff that I can bet on here in Vegas because there's just no market for players. Yeah. I can't, I can't play any of it here in Nevada. Yeah. Evan, you're the man. Love every time you come on any of our shows. So pumped up for the draft. Everybody, check out Evan. Check out Establish the Run. Check out Steve at Fezic Sports at Evan Silva at Ross Tucker NFL at Ross Tucker pod should have Ben standing on the feast tomorrow with a little more mock draft action. Other than that, good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. 
Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft, all available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 